In the last videos, I talked briefly about um, yeah the the topic that um, in multiprocessing you copy memory from one process to the memory of a new process that you want to create. Um, but I, I didn't talk about how exactly it is done. And um, at least Joblib uses a module called Pickle, and Pickle is a Python module that can be used for um, data serialization. And um, as we haven't really talked about serialization in this course before, I think this is a, yeah, a good time to just quickly go over what this is and how you can use Pickle um, to serialize your objects, um, yeah, your Python objects, um, and also objects containing um, data from different libraries. Okay, so what is Pickle? Um, Pickle is a library in Python that can be used to take an, any kind of um, Python object and turn it into a binary string, um, basically, so a string of bytes. And it's not human readable, um, but it does contain everything that Python needs to know about an object so that you can um, yeah, recreate it from this pickled version um, once you need it again. And this can be really useful, for example, um, to save an object to a file um, or to send some data over the internet, uh, so some Python object, um, or as in the multiprocessing example, copy the data to another process. Um, yeah, so why is it called pickle? Um, I, I try to find that out and it seems like um, the person who created Python thought it was funny because um, there's an analogy to um, pickling vegetables and when you pickle a vegetable you make it um, yeah you make it basically um, stay good longer and um, yeah this is also what python pickling does it takes an object and um, stores it in some way so that you can use it later and um, you can store it for a long, a long period of time, uh, just as you can do with pickled vegetables. So this is why, I believe this is why pickle, the library is called pickle. Okay, so how do you use pickle in Python? Um, first we import pickle, and um, then I've just created this small class here, um, this animal class, and it just has four attributes. Uh, it has a name, the number of legs, uh, it has a boolean if it's fluffy or not, and a running speed. And then it just has this representation method, which returns a string, um, including all of these four attributes. Um, and this is just used to, yeah, just basically have some functionality in this class. So this is just demo, um, not really anything useful, but um, this is just to show how you can use Python objects um, and serialize them in some way and then restore them from the serialized um, version. So yeah, I just create three animals down here and print them. So I've created um, a cow, a spider and a monkey and um, just gave them some attributes, um, which I don't think if they're right, I, I don't know if they're right. Um, I don't know how fast cows run and I, don't know how fast spiders can run and I also don't know how fast monkeys can run but I'm pretty sure that cows have four legs, spiders have eight legs and monkeys have two legs. So um, yeah this is just any this can be any kind of Python class um, and yeah so you can use basically anything. You could also include um, special library objects in there so you could example for example include a numpy array in there um, you could also just directly pickle a NumPy array. Um, yeah, there, there are lots of different um, things that you can pickle. Um, for example, from, from machine learning, if you know the scikit-learn library, um, this actually recommends that you use pickle to save away classifiers and regressors, so basically machine learning models um, for later use. So if you train a model, then you can use pickle to store this model on your um, on your hard disk in some file and then you can afterwards use pickle again 
to restore this from the file and just use it as a trained model. And it's very easy to, to work with this. And um, I believe TensorFlow also uses pickle. Um, so you can also pickle TensorFlow models um, and then unpickle them afterwards, which is then very easy to store such a model in the file, uh, in some file where you don't really have to keep track of um, yeah, what the model architecture was, what the parameters in the model were. Um, so it's just very easy. You save it away, the whole thing, and then afterwards you just load everything back up. Um, so yeah, these are just some examples where pickle is really useful. Okay, so how do you um, pickle an object? Uh, for that, you can use this dumps function and pickle.dumps will just take an object and dump out the binary representation of this object. And this will happen in, as such a bytes object. And this is not actually a string uh, as it might look, but it's a bytes object. So um, this is yeah, just a sequence of raw bytes. And uh, here you can see these bytes as a hexadecimal representation. And um, yeah, in between you can see some um, some some yeah some words so some human readable words and these are for example the name of the class um, then you have here the name param uh, the name um, yeah this name uh, attribute here so the name of the attribute you find you can find cow here um, or cowie um, as this animal is called and um, yeah, it's not really human readable, but you can see, you can find some of the objects that you have put into it. Um, okay, and then, um, yeah, I've saved this binary uh, string in this a1 bin variable. And then to restore this, we just call pickle.loads. And pickle.loads takes such a bytes object and recreates the Python object from that. And um, yeah, I'll just save this in this restored variable. And then um, printing the type of this variable, you can see this again is an animal. So after restoring this from this bytes object, we get an animal back, which is nice. And if we print this, we can also see that the representation still works. So we're still able to print this um, string, which just comes from this, um, yeah, this method that was defined in the class. Okay, um, but this didn't really help us much to um, work with files. So we couldn't um, yeah, save this in a file yet. Uh, we could, of course, manually open a file um, and write this to the file. Um, but Pickle also allows us to do this um, a bit easier. So um, we still have to create the file manually. Um, but then, well, then we can use um, pickle.dump um, yeah, to just pickle the data and directly write it to some file. And uh, as you already know, we can open files in Python uh, using the open function. And I'm using a context manager around that, so I don't have to close the file afterwards. But this will be done automatically. And um, yeah, it's important here that I have the second parameter in the open function. And uh, this is set to WB, and this stands for write binary. So we want to write to this file, and it will be a binary file. So it will not be an ASCII file, for example, but it will binary data, because Pico creates binary data. And um, yeah, here I'm just passing a list of the three animals to dump. Um, so this will take the list object with everything inside, and serialize it and save it into this file. So the file is called animals.pickle. And um, yeah, we'll just create this file and um, now it's done. So we've created this animals.pickle file, um, which now contains these three animals inside the list. So then um, to get this back into Python, we can use um, pickle.load. And um, here we again have to uh, open this file um, but this time we have this uh, parameter rb instead of wb and rb just stands for read binary um, because this time we don't want to write to the file but we want to read from it 
and then pico.load just takes this file object and returns um, the Python object that was pickled in the beginning. So if we run this, we can see we get a list containing these three animals. And um, yeah, since we can print lists um, in such a way that uh, we get the representation of the objects inside, uh, we now get this yeah, description string um, of the animals instead of just the name animal.